Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Thick Man Takes Over Los Santos. If you enjoy this video, please name a town Modest Pelicanville and then explode a nuclear power plant within that town, triggering a nuclear disaster. And then hopefully HBO will make a mini series about it all, as this would really help spread the good word of my channel. Meet Agent 47, a retired hitman who is on a mission to become the most powerful crime lord in Los Santos, whilst also ensuring he stays sufficiently hydrated at all times. These are Du Bois, Stealth Omato, and Crosby, and together the trio form a feared gang known as the Sons of Virgins. These are their stories. So I load into the game and spawn into the decrepit little flat I call home. Honestly, this apartment is so morbid it makes Auschwitz look like a five-star hotel. In fact, I am upgrading my home today. This is just not somewhere a kingpin would live. Marto says he's coming to pick me up, but earlier, before the lads logged in, I did play a few rounds of Arena Wars, which is basically just a demolition derby and made some easy cash. I got over 50k for winning a match, and they even gave everyone $10,000 when they lost a damn Round. It reminded me of the participation ribbons they give kids in schools now. Hey kid, you came dead last and you literally suck at everything. Here, have a ribbon and a pat on the back and oh, good luck with the rest of your life until a tiny little factor called reality turkey slaps you right in your glass jaw. Wow, just kidding. Everyone's a winner in my eyes, except for Marto, as demonstrated by his hectic MotoGP skills. Luckily, Crosby is on his way in a military Avenger aircraft. He pulls up and tells us to get in, but we're like, Nah, f that big dog, we're climbing up on top. This goes less than well as I fall to the road and rupture my ACL and break four ribs. Then despite the plane's propellers being made in Thailand, they proceed to give me a less than happy ending. To make matters worse, my corpse actually broke one of the propellers, making the aircraft now nearly impossible to fly. I, uh... Guess we'll drive to Crosby's facility then. Anyway, we've been doing this mega bank heist mission and it's taken literally 50,000 hours so far and we still have a lot to do. So I ask Crosby why we chose such a long bank heist and he says that he warned us that this was the longest mission and that Marto and I said, and I quote, just yeet the skeet Crosby, you moist bandito. Well, I mean, that does sound like the sort of intellectual statement we would say, so I guess we made our bed and it's time to yeet in it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. We stop to get ammunition for the big old quest, but instead of resupplying, I use my silenced pistol to pop Crosby's tire. Moments later, he loses control and skids off the road, almost killing both himself and Marto. Damn, what a great prank. You should all do this in real life to help bring laughter into your friends and family's lives. We head down into the facility and get ready to start smashing some of these heist missions. No better way to prepare for a highly tactical situation than down 10 beers in one minute. Actually, you should all do this in real life too. Abusing alcohol is so often frowned upon by society, but nothing says I'm a legend like starting each day with 13 standard drinks and a couple of lines of a book. A good old fashioned renowned piece of literature really stimulates the mind and helps you launch into a productive day. Anyway, look how drunk Marto is. He also got his hair cut at some point and now has blue cornrows that make him look like Elsa from Frozen. Disney princesses are pretty gangster though, so well played Marto. And I also imagine that they can't hold their alcohol, so it all fits together perfectly. So we sit down and listen to yet another painful, unskippable cutscene. In a nutshell, we have to go and steal an armoured truck. You know, classic heist prep stuff. Unfortunately, I only have a two-seater car, which in hindsight was kind of a strange purchase by me given that there is three of us in the gang, but I guess. See you later, Crosby. Good luck with everything, mate. We arrive at the armoured truck's location where the cops are already in a shootout with some local thugs. See, the beauty of this silenced pistol is I can pick off police without alerting them all at once, meaning this firefight can be clean, quick, and quiet. Marto then throws a hand grenade, which blows up the entire petrol station. Well, there's that way too, I suppose. So we grab the truck and head on out of there. This thing is ultra tough, so the police will never be able to destroy it. In fact, nothing could really destroy it. There is five inches of hardened steel surrounding us. Somehow though, I still manage to mess up the mission as my inner Duke of Hazard gets the better of me and I try to send it but end up lodging the vehicle in a hotel pool. It was really lodged too. That's a... Uh... That's my bad, lads. We restart the mission, steal another truck, and head on out of there. That was a bit of a waste of like 15 minutes having to do that twice, but just like annoying enthusiastic people always say, every failure is just a learning opportunity. But then, yeah, um... 
Yeah, some would say this was my fault, but when you think about it, Crosby and Marto foolishly let me drive again, so they are actually enabling me to be a really shitty driver. Worst friends ever. So eventually we do get the truck back to the bunker as the lads finally switched on and banned me from driving. We then go on to complete several more missions. Like this one mission where we went to steal a plane and the hangar seemed empty, but then suddenly they turned off the lights and ambushed us. I guess they must be consulting with the Catholic Church for mission tactics tactics as this strategy is popular amongst priests. It's weird though, after missions we keep spawning back in weird locations. Like after that one we spawned in some country town. Crosby actually has a little house out here and so we head inside. It's sort of depressing that he has a random house in the country that is significantly better than my place. In the bedroom there is also women's underwear all over the floor, which means either Crosby is a non-virgin or Crosby is a crossdresser. Either way, look at Marto on the bed, it looks like he's really seen some sh** you're in a safe place now mate you're okay. So given we are super far away from Crosby's bunker, we need to obviously commute back. Now we could steal a plane or have a helicopter pick us up, but instead we grab a classic family station wagon and road trip back all sincere like. I even use the cinematic camera and get some really wholesome angles of the car ride. You know it's worth remembering that life is as much about the journey as it is the destination. We arrive at the bunker feeling pretty refreshed after easily the most zen car ride I've ever had in in Grand Theft Auto, and then we proceed to get obliterated by an orbital cannon. What the actual f I've seen armoured cars with machine guns, laser beams, flying motorbikes with rocket launchers, but now there are apparently bloody orbital cannons that can obliterate you from outer space? I want one. And to rub salt into the wound, the game spawns us at the city hospital ages away from the bunker where we need to be. Sometimes, lads and lasses, you've just got to say screw it and go and see some professional dancers acrobatically and impressively spin around on a pole whilst you respectfully throw dollar bills at them. So we arrive and Crosby is now dressed like Willy Wonka for some reason. Awesome, I guess. But anyway, you've actually got to be one sad loser if you go into strip clubs on GTA. We are only going in for educational purposes so we get a hard pass. I suddenly remember why parents all over the world hate this game so much. That being said, I didn't even learn about the birds and the bees from my family. I learned it from Grand Theft Auto like a normal bloody kid, so my parents should be thanking Rockstar for saving them an awkward conversation. I actually remember going into these questionable establishments as a young lad and having to quickly pause the game to stop my mum seeing anything condemning. It was a real operation, I'll tell you that much. Now I've I've never believed in love at first sight, but I meet this professional dancer named Sapphire. What a beautiful name and an amazing girl. So I ask her out on a date and she's like, sure thing babe, and suddenly I am deeply in love with this perfect virtual woman. She takes me to a room out the back and we play Scrabble for like three and a half minutes. She also asked me for $250 afterwards and of course I'm going to lend my girlfriend some cash, we are in love after all. Anyway, we leave the club and get ready to tackle some more missions, but I've only got one thing on my mind. My girl, Saf. Actually, I better give her a call just to check in. Make sure she's doing okay, you know? So I call her and the number says busy. Look, I'm sure she's just still at work. I'm not worried. We're fine. We're in love. I'm not worried. And so the next mission has us go and steal a duffel bag from some gangsters that has like, I assume something important in it that will help us out with the bank heist. If I'm being honest, during the cutscene, I made myself a hot chocolate, so I don't really know what's going on. But sometimes it's just nice to treat yourself. So we storm the apartment and it's cool to see how easy and fluid indoor combat is in this game. I go to shoot a gangster and accidentally pistol whip Crosby in the face, ending his life. We storm the place and take down a few gangsters and I get some Grand Theft Auto San Andreas vibes. That game was honestly amazing, I should really make a video on it soon. I actually can't imagine how many hours I spent playing that as a kid. In fact, when you think about it, I'm actually living proof that these type of games don't corrupt kids at all. I mean, look at this selfie I took of myself this afternoon. I'm doing great. So we keep doing missions and make some good progress, but I'm going to be real with you guys. My shorty Sapphire still hasn't returned my calls. I'm out here giving this girl everything and she can't even flick me a text. I call her like 17 more times and call her friends and call her mum and send half a dozen messages as I've heard girls love it when you figuratively suffocate them with messages that overuse emojis. Still no response though. Crosby tries to help take my mind off the heartbreak by picking Mato up 
up in a cargo helicopter when he was sitting in a car and dropping him in the lake. It is highly amusing, but it would be funnier if Marto wasn't in my car. I decide to try and take my mind off things by focusing on my work instead. So I've always wanted to be my own boss, and so I started this cute little boutique business, a cocaine lab. It's not making much money, and so I invest $75,000 into supplies to try and get this place moving product a little faster so I can get rich. And then all of a sudden, I have a huge realization. I don't need to win Sapphire back with my personality, I've got money. I quickly whip out my phone and purchase myself a $217,000 apartment right in the heart of the city. I then jump on a motorbike and speed over there as fast as I can, and damn lads and lasses, this place is tasteful. There's even businessmen in suits, smoking and talking on the phone, looking important. So you know this is probably a place Sapphire has visited many times before. I deliver a swift uppercut to this guy in a suit to assert myself as the alpha guy in a suit and then head up to my new place. The lads come up too so we can all check it out together and it's honestly really baller. A nice open plan living space but it looks right at a construction site which will probably devalue the property but I guess that's what happens when you irrationally spend $200,000 on an apartment without even seeing it first. The moment of truth. I whip out my phone and call my baby Sapphire and she answers. This is the happiest day of my life. And yes, to my IRL girlfriend, I'm sorry to say this is happier than the day I met you. I invite her over and I am so nervous that I quickly scull a green juice to help boost my immune system. God knows I'll need it. A short while later, she buzzes the doorbell and I go and let my wonderful virtual girlfriend in. Damn, Saf, you could have thrown on a coat or something. This is a classy apartment, but look, I get it. You can came straight from work and I respect the heck out of a hard worker. I tell her what's mine is hers and then invite her to move in with me. Was that too soon? This is only our second date, but I mean true love is true love. Sapphire then just starts dancing in the living room. I try to tell her that I was thinking we would have more of a sit down early dinner, maybe open a bottle of white wine and watch some Netflix and just cuddle. But this, this is highly inappropriate. We have guests, babe. What happens next might be one of the most shocking acts to have ever happened, ever, literally ever, anywhere in the world. Sapphire proceeds to give Marto a special dance that should only be done between two consenting adults that love each other very much. The love of my life and my mate right here in my living room. This is officially the number one worst anime betrayal of all time. Look at Thick Man's face, he's crushed. I have words with Sapphire and tell her that I just don't think this is going to work out, but she just keeps on dancing and I guess that randy free spirit is why I fell in love with her in the first place. Today we have a broken heart, but next episode I am going to extract my revenge on Stealth Omato. Thanks for watching you legends and a massive thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel through Patreon. Until next time and as always, stay classy.